See the most high, the most high is greatest of all all times. All right. And the most high name is Yahweh, which means he exists. He is in everything. He is, he is everywhere. Okay, Yahweh. All right. I want to give all praises to Yahweh. Okay, by Hashem, which is in the Hebrew tongue. In the name Yahweh Shai, in the Hebrew tongue, which means he is the Savior. That is who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. By Hashem Rakakodesh, in the name of the Holy Spirit. In double honors to the apostles of GMS, in salutation to the, uh, the, the elders out there, the Akim, the Akbaf, okay, laboring in his truth and sincerity. Now, the Most High is the greatest of all time because what the Most High did was the Most High took, took us from off of these, these, uh, these fashion fabrics. What the devil, what Satan was doing, what Satan was sowing, okay, and mingling us against in, in, in other garments. All right, he was mingling us in an, on another fashion. All right, and when you go into fashion, it goes into different mannerisms or characteristics. So, Second Maccabees chapter four verse thirteen it says, "Now such was the height of Greek fashions." And increase of heathenish manners through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch and no high priest. Verse 14, that the priests had no courage to serve anymore at the altar. They were being sown, the priests, they were cut from a certain cloth. We were cut from a particular cloth. All right. You know, it says we are sheep. It says Yahweh Shah was a lamb. We're actually that wool. And as wool, we were being sold amongst uh, patent leather, um, fox fur. We were being sold, okay, into other customs, into where our fat, where the fashion, the outlook was totally different. And what this devil thought the Most High would do was because we was being fashioned like the heathen, he thought he, the Most High would just throw away the whole garment because they know they nothing. The Most High don't consider them nothing, right? So what this devil thought is that we will all be just thrown out, out of style, put out, burnt in the fire. But he didn't know that the Most High made a promise, okay, that he would actually gather these fabrics together, all right, and make that righteous garment. Make that righteous garment. So here, during the time of the Grecian Empire, you know, and this is this is going to build up, okay? We were being sold, sewn into the fashions, the fabrics, so to speak, as the Greeks and living after their manners and their customs. You see, verse 14, it says that the priests, now when you go into who the priests are, the priests was what? The Levites, in particular family lines of the Levites at, at that. That the priest had no courage to serve at any more at the altar, but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hastened to be partakers of unlawful allowance in the place of exercise, which is a gymnasium, and which what? They were wearing no clothes. It's funny they were wearing no clothes because the Lord said, uh, keep your garments lest you be found naked. Now, they were wearing no clothes physically, but they were wearing no clothes spiritually as well. Because they wasn't doing their priestly office as they were fashioned to be. Okay? Now, it says, uh, let me finish this. Allowance in the place of exercise after the game of discus, which goes back to track and field, called them forth. Verse 15, not setting by the honor of honors of their fathers, all right, that court they was cut, cut from, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. All right, and which which is another fabric that we was not supposed to mingle, be mingled upon, because in the law, in Deuteronomy, you know what? I'm gonna hold this preset. Let me get it in here. In Deuteronomy, all right, chapter 22, let's get that. Let's get that. Let's get that. Salakia. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 11. It says, thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts. Now, the Lord would not want diverse garments 
of the earth, all right, physical garments, such as what? It says, as of woolen and linen to be mixed together. So how much more the Lord uh, wanting us to be mixed in other customs? But being that we were sown in these other customs, as you've seen, the Greeks of the fashions. What about the Medes? What about us being here in America, being, being into the fashion of a drug dealer, being into a fashion of a rapper, a fashion of a model, fashion of a, 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 a pimp, a fashion of, you know, gang member, all right? Right, see, these were different fabrics we were being sold upon. But now what the Lord is doing is he's knitting together those righteous individuals Although they were sewn amongst different fabrics. Now you're like, damn, how could that happen? How could the Lord take two different from two different households? But guess what? That's why it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Now is the Lord calling all fabrics? No, because we just read that the most high don't even like them being mixed. But it's the, no difference between a Jew and a Greek because they're cut from the same cloth. All right. As the old saying goes, you know. Uh, that you know, they're cut, they're cut from the same cloth. All right. That's why there's no difference between them, because they're cut from the same cloth. They are the same. All right. Now, how could two individuals be taken from one household or, or one fabric to another? Well, let's get it in Samuel's. Because it happened with the house of David and the house of Saul, right? Was not Jonathan rightfully so supposed to be at the house of Saul, but really he was knitted together by the Most High because his soul was it was was of the house of David, and that's what it that's what's going on. See, Esau, all right, the devil sold us, all right, Zerubbabel. His name means sown in Babylon, but like as a seed. But pretty much we were knitted you know, into these different fashions of life. And the devil thought that as long as he allow us to, 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 to why do you think it's they okay hip hop and all that? That shit, it got bad customs. But why do you think they okay it? Because as long as we're attached to that fabric, you know, though hand join the hand, though, though fabric sewn to fabric, it shall not go unpunished. We would just burn right with it. But the, he didn't know that, he don't know about the most high's mercies and he don't know that this is spiritual more than physical. OK, so first Samuel chapter 18, verse one, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. When you go into that word knit, it means to bind, to tie. All right. Physically and then or mentally, they were of what? The same mind. When you come into truth, you are of the same mind. All right. We we're going to speak the same things. All right. So they were what? They were joined together. All right. Made stronger, knit stronger. You know, reminds me of Ecclesiastes, three uh, strong court. Right. To bind together and league together. So their souls was knitted in league together, even though Saul was this. I mean, even though Jonathan was the son of Saul, he still hid things from his own father because he was in league. OK, with King David, because. They were in league in the spirit realm before before anything. So what the Lord is doing is the needle and the thread is the word. And he's gathering the elect that were sewn all throughout different fashions and that were a part of different fabrics. That's why everybody will come in from different walks of life. All right. But guess what? You got brothers in the Philippines. You got brothers all over the world. And they're preaching the same doctrine. Baruch 437. Lo, thy sons come whom thou sent us away. Now remember, they're all cut from the same cloth. They just were sold amongst other things. So you might look at the whole thing and be like, that's a Chinese looking garment. That's some Buddhism thing. No, that's some wool in there that the Most High is going to take out. They're so, the angels are sorting those things out. But their spirit is that original fabric and they're being taken out of that and they're being gathered. The Most High is not going to mix things he just thought he just the Lord said he won't even mix wool with linen. All right. So then if the most I really take an actual heathen like these Christian churches think and bring them inside the truth, that's not going to happen. The most I don't even do it with, with fabrics. So how much actual souls and people. All right. 
that would be that that's just two different things. It says, Lo, thy sons come whom thou sentest away. How do we get sent away? We were sown in Zerubbabel names actually means sown in Babylon. We were sown in Babylon. We were sown in Egypt. We were sown in here, here, in during the time of the Medes. All right. We were sown in these different areas. It's James 1 and 1. Greetings to the 12 tribes that were scattered abroad. And what would you think when we scattered abroad, we grew up in those customs. And when Jake get into a custom, Jake really get into the shit. All right. I never seen no fucking Arabs go harder than Jake when they be start that print. Man, Jake be go go crazy. Right. It says, oh, lo, thy sons come whom thou sent us away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word. All right. That's the needle and the thread sewing the fabrics together. All right, of the Holy One rejoicing in the glory of Yahweh by Shib Yahweh Shai. All right. Because let's get it. Let's get let's get that. All right. The Most High said he wants us to be clothed, right? All right. Revelation 16 and 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. All right. <laughs> which is what? The scriptures. All right. And which is the ways of our, our forefathers. All right. Which is that one pure doctrine, which is that wool, so to speak. All right. It, for the terms of, uh, oh, you know, the analyzation that's being used to the Holy Spirit. Right. That wool is that pure doctrine that's of your forefathers. All right. We're not going. We're not uh, silk. We're not, um, uh, 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 um, you know, or any other any other fabrics. We're, we're of that wool and the Lord is gathering us. All right. And because these other ones very soon is going to pass away because it says the fashion of this world pass away. So what is the fashion of this world? Well, Esau gathers together all fabrics. That's why it says he heaping from to himself all men as a people. In Habakkuk 2 and 15, real quick. What one, um, Salaki, Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yea, because he transgressive by wine, he's a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlarges his desire as hell. And is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heap up unto him all people. OK, because he wants to sow different customs together. That's why you got uh, the style of the Egyptians here, the, the, the June bug dance, the females with the eyelids, the uh, spirit of sodomy, homosexuality. OK, you know, he's sewing together all these different fabrics. And that's what Babylon Babylon literally means a confusion with mixing. OK, now he's doing all of that. All right. But he knows that what? He has an end. All right. Um, is it Second Corinthians? They say the fashion of this world passeth away. All right. And the actual elect, all right, is not going to pass away because it says Israel is a world without end. All right. First Corinthians 7 and 31. And they, and they that use this world as not abusing it for the fashion. Now, let's really go into that because we're saying knitting. We're talking about the habitus as compromising everything in a person which strikes the senses, the figure, bearing, discourse, actions, manner of life. The manner of life, your mannerisms, the customs, okay? It's passing of this world, passive away. So that's why we're being reconformed unto the image of Yahawashai, the material, the clothing of Yahawashai, because this fashion is passing away. That's why you got brothers like uh, the, the dude with A.R. Rab, I, I don't know the, uh, the guy's name, he, he, He's coming to the truth. He posted, I'm not black no more. I'm an Israelite. You know, that that way of that wool or uh, that that uh, actual fashion is coming back together. It's coming in style. OK, but remember, the most High is dealing with the elect. But nevertheless, that fashion is coming in style. OK, same way, you know, as it, it went on from this custom and those customs. Nobody's into the Roman things, although they rehearse certain things of those empires. Right. But. You know, this this world is passing away. You know, the spirit of uh, Christmas is dying off. And, you know, all these different ways is starting to die off. OK, because people people are coming into the truth, knowledge and understanding. All right. But this is how, you know, Cornelius is an Israelite. OK, because in Psalms real quick, I'm going to get this really quick. Uh, Psalms chapter 119. I want to get this really quick uh, before I head out. Psalms 119. Uh, Psalms chapter 119, uh, Psalms 119 and 63, it says, I am a companion of all them that fear thee. 
Now, when you go into the word companion, it also means what? Knit together. So they are cut from the same cloth. There's no difference between a Jew or a Greek. And it says, of all them that fear thee, they did not say that uh, Cornelius excused, uh, uh, he feared the Most High, right? And of them that keep thy precepts. Uh, let's get that real quick. Acts 10 and 1. And now if he's a companion, all right, and this is a righteous individual saying that, then guess what? Cornelius feared the Most High. It says, Acts 10 and 2, 10 and 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. So this was Merino wool, because Italian wool is Merino wool. <laughs> it says, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to the Most High always. He is a, we just read in Psalms, he's a companion, meaning that Cornelius was already knitted together in the spirit of that wool, okay, of, of that elect. He's a companion. So they're bonded together, okay? That's why there's no difference between a Jew or a Greek because they're bonded together in the spirit, all right, because they're all of that original wool, that, that original texture. You know, this is cloth talk for the for the elect, though, you know? So that's what the Mosai is doing in a needle and a thread. And, you know, Yahweh Shai is like that that thread because that's why I say in John 15 and 3, you know, to abide that uh the fruit in order for the 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 branches can't bear without the um the branches can't bear fruit without the vine, you know? So, you know, using a fruit example, but also using going back to the actual uh that uh that needle and thread. All right. So um that's pretty much it, you know, through the spirit. Um I gotta cut out. You know, I want to give all praises to you. How about Shim Yahweh Shai? By Shim Rikaku Dust. You know, that was a real quick lesson. Lord's will was edifying. And to the next time, I'll say Shalom.